a police officer remanded to prison on several charges of burglary. The illegal importation of guns is creating a security risk for Barbados and tertiary level institutions told to produce students who can come up with practical solutions to the problems confronting society. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Very good evening to you with the Monday, October 29th edition of the CBC Evening News. I am Ryan Broom in our top story. The police officer who went on a 13-month stealing spree has been remanded to prison. Police Constable Derwin Omar Cumberbatch pleaded guilty to all 14 charges when he appeared in the whole town magistrate's court today. Sharika Griffith was there and filed this story. A psychiatric assessment and pre-sentencing report have been ordered for the 30-year-old police constable of around the town St. Peter. It's alleged that on 13 different occasions, starting in September last year, the officer trespassed on the premises of several businesses, all in the Spitestown area, taking more than $12,000 worth of cash and merchandise. Prosecutor Janice Eiffel says not all of the property was recovered. She says the accused is the police officer, and they're all very serious matters and should be dealt with accordingly. Mr. Kamabach was then asked if there was anything he wanted to say. Standing in the dock dressed in a grey dress shirt and grey slacks, he apologised first to the Commissioner of Police and the members of the force before apologising to the business places affected. It was at that point that his attorney Arthur Holder asked that the lawman who had previously been sent for counselling be remanded to the psychiatric hospital so that his mental state could be determined prior to sentencing. Magistrate Wanda Blair, however, suggested that these reports could all be done while he's on remand. He will return to court on December 10th. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks, Sharika. Well, the illegal importation of guns and ammunition in the region is placing the island and the Caribbean's national security at risk. Assistant Commissioner of Police Sylvester Louis says Caribbean citizens have every reason to be concerned as law enforcement has been recovering many firearms, weapons, he notes, that are neither made in Barbados nor the Caribbean. The senior police official told a workshop on illicit cargo interdiction that the weapons are entering through the region's port, porous borders and are end up ending up in the hands of hooligans and gangsters. And while he believes 98% of border security personnel are doing an excellent job, it's the minority creating problems. But it is, it is that intractable 2% among us who are giving all of us a bad name. Who are either in collaboration with the criminal elements or at the very least turning a blind eye. This has to stop. Before I go any further, let me be as politically correct as I possibly can. I'm not identifying any particular agency or individual because they are two percenters in most groups, be it police, customs, army, coast guard. Now, the ongoing workshop is geared at strengthening CARICOM's capacity to prevent and detect illegal activity at its borders and to enable increased prosecution and higher conviction rates. It is being hosted in collaboration with CARICOM Impacts and the Regional Security System. Liaison Officer for the Caribbean with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, Bo Harris, says the synergies between the representing agencies are important in the fight against transnational organized crime. We have a, a week of activities and, and sessions planned for you, and uh, we hope that this will definitely serve to assist you in, in your daily duties. Uh, I would like to say thank you again to all of the institutions here present and to the participants as well, not only in Barbados but throughout the region. It's extremely exciting for us to be able to have such a, a broad reach. In other news, the Barbados Evangelical Association is concerned about corruption and will be speaking on the issue in the coming month. According to Executive Member Reverend Stephen Giddens, the clergy will be involved in this session. My president, Dr. Nigel Taylor, and his executive of the Barbados Evangelical Association are deeply concerned 
about corruption and all that goes with it. In fact, so concerned are they that plans are in place to conduct a discussion on corruption and money laundering with a selected group of ministers and lay leaders come November 3rd and 17th. If you think you're in this battle alone, think again. The church is willing to walk beside you when you do that which is right. We will support you. Well, tertiary level institutions are being encouraged to not only focus on producing graduates for the workforce, but citizens who can find practical solutions to the problems confronting society. Minister of Energy and Water Resources Wilfred Abrams says it makes no sense if these professionals cannot help a country to advance. He told the opening of the four-day Sixth International Conference on Higher Education, there is a nexus between education and social development. The conference being held under the theme, Modern Education and Economic Stimulation, Innovation, Praxis and Sustainability, is aimed at showcasing the emerging local, regional and international research that can enhance policy and practice at all levels in education. Our institutions must move quickly to develop a culture of practical research that will lead to the creation of persons who will, among other things, investigate green energy alternatives, alternative medicines from our plants, and now more so medical marijuana. Barbados has been a leader in the use of solar energy, and I believe there's much more research to be done in making efficient use of our solar and wind and oceanic resources. Meanwhile, Barbados was afforded some insight into the American company He Kate Energy's efforts in developing solar, wind, and gas projects in international markets such as Africa, Pakistan, and Jordan. Partner and Chief Strategy Officer David well Wilhelm says though they support green aspects of solar energy, the company is also focused on creating jobs in the new energy economy. He is also telling Barbados it has a chance of leading the way with respect to renewable energy. You have sun and wind. The rest of the world only wishes it has. We don't have it in Ohio. Germany has less than Ohio. But you have it. And a, a hundred, I, I see the windmills in the landscape. A hundred years ago that people were thinking about that. And, and so, so solar and wind and linking in battery storage allows you to build on your own assets. In other news, more parents are being encouraged to enroll their children in organizations like the Boy Scouts Association. This appeal from Minister of Youth and Community Empowerment, Adrian Ford. Addressing the crowd gathered at Queen's Park after the Boy Scouts March over the weekend, Minister Ford says, the importance of such institutions must not be underestimated. We often see the church, school and the family as the main social institutions which are, which are responsible for imparting the norms and values to which society adheres. However, I have no doubt that organizations such as the Boy Scouts has contributed immeasurably to the lives of our young people. I wish to implore all parents and guardians to encourage your boys to become involved in associations such as the Boy Scouts, since there are many benefits to be derived. And President of the Association, Chief Justice Sir Marston Gibson, lamented the fact that videos showing young people fighting are being widely circulated, while those with young people doing positive things are not. My message to you, if I can say anything to them, or I give you any message, is that I hope that events such as this will find its way on your social media. If you've taken photographs and, you've, and you're taking movies, send these movies out. Show some positive images of the young people of Barbados. There's still a lot of good in our youth. In related news, the Barbados Boy Scouts Association is enlisting the help of the Barbados Defense Force to address a shortage of male leaders in that organization. Word of this from Chief Commissioner Dr. Nigel Taylor. Sharika Griffith reports. More women than men have been coming forward to be positive role models for boys in this country. 
This much was evident as the Barbados Boy Scouts Association held its annual march through the city. Chief Commissioner Dr. Nigel Taylor says the association is working on a new initiative to get more men involved. Well, the program in place that we are trying to put in place with the Defence Force, where some of their volunteers could come and join us. And that is a perennial problem, the whole thing about men. Um, and I, 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 I've answered this many times. People always ask me, so Chief, when you're going to uh, let the women um, go in the background and let the men come forward. What men you see? The association has about 2,500 members from the lowest rank, the Beavers, up to those in leadership roles and volunteers. Dr. Taylor says they're aiming for 3,000. We are competing with many, many extracurricular activities. Now, there was a time when scouting was one of the main activities, huh? if not the main, along with cadetting. But now there are so many key clubs and so many different things. So I would think when you look at the demographics, 3,000 out boys, young boys and leaders and stuff out of the population of Barbados, I think that's a good percentage when you look at the boy, boy ratio. Assistant Chief Commissioner Sandra Aline Richards says there were several changes for this year's parade. A lot of the youth watches social media so we are streaming it live so that we will get more boys interested in joining the movement and also to increase our numbers in the leadership. The Girl Guys Association which is celebrating its 100th anniversary also took part in the parade which ended in Queen's Park. Sharika Griffith, CBC News. Thanks, Sharika. Well, don't give up on children with learning challenges. This advice from principal of the Olga Miller Nursery School, Wendy Small, who was speaking at the institution's 10th anniversary closing ceremony. Our Lorna Jones reports. Early childhood education has been recognized as a critical component in the future development of a child. And at the Olga Miller Nursery School, the staff is giving their charges a head start on the learning path. Principal Wendy Small says education, especially early education, has many societal and economic benefits. She encouraged parents and teachers not to give up on those who may not learn as quickly as others. All children do not learn at the same rate. Give the children a chance. Every child is a genius. Genius here does not mean a great inventor or someone with exceptionally great natural ability, but simply that everyone will be good at his or her craft. We are to guide and help them develop their talents and their skills and so find their niche in society. Ms. Small was speaking during the closing ceremony for the nursery school's 10th anniversary. The occasion featured exciting performances by the students. Independent Senator and Rector of the Holy Trinity Anglican Church, Reverend Michael Maxwell, gave an address in which he reminded parents and guardians to nurture their children in their education, spirituality and health. I want to implore, encourage, particularly the parents who maybe be encouraging or, or giving your children um, some unhealthy snacks. We are hearing a lot about this now within the, the Ministry of Education in terms of ensuring and encouraging parents to, to give your children things that can nurture them well in terms of their health. And so when you're packing their lunches and so forth and sending them off to, to, to Olga Miller, again, we know of of the impact that certain snacks can have on our children in terms of their attention span and, and their hyperactivity and so forth. When they, they come, they're not settled because of, of certain dyes and so forth that are affecting their bodies. And so we don't want that as a foundation for our, our little treasures. And in her greetings, president of the Association of Public Primary School Principals, Marilyn Gamble, urged the students to pay attention to their teachers. Lorna Jones, CBC News. Thanks, Lorna. Well, Barbados's largest credit union is putting systems in place to deal with the potential fallout from government's retrenchment of hundreds of civil servants. That's according to acting branch manager of the Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union's Broad Street branch, Glenneth Clark. Ms. Clark says the credit union has assembled a special team to work exclusively with members 
affected by the current economic challenges. I do believe that we will be affected because our membership base is a lot of our government employees, so yes, we will be affected. But we do have a relief center in place, and we also have assistance in place for these persons that they could approach us, whether it's consolidations or whatever they want done, we can assist them in our center with problems with their accounts. Thomas Clark was speaking to CBC on the sidelines of a membership appreciation day in the city. Customers conducting business were serenaded, presented with roses, and even got a chance to win prizes. The credit union has reportedly been seeing an influx of new customers who have, been clo who have closed their accounts at commercial banks due to high user fees. And with Christmas just around the corner, Ms. Clark says the credit union will once again be offering Christmas loans of up to $5,000. We do have the Christmas loan that is already available to members here from two weeks ago. And if you think that you also need a Christmas loan, you can also make an application with us. We are assisting you wherever possible and we are here to serve you because the credit unit is where you belong. We will help you to have a good Christmas 2018.